Assalamu alaikum. Everyone would like to buy a house or build a house. Many people are renting houses on earth for a short span of time. And we like to make sure that the facilities within the house are good and usable. Everyone would love a beautiful bathroom where the water comes out nice and hot and where the pressure of the water is good. Everyone would like a lovely kitchen where subhanallah you can cook and you can enjoy and it looks nice. People would like a little lounge, a place to sit where a living room we can sit, the guests might sit, family members can gather around and perhaps benefit in one way or another. And people would love a beautiful mattress and a lovely duvet perhaps, pillows that are amazing. Imagine that Egyptian cotton. Imagine so much of beauty. Imagine a lovely cool room with air condition. Everyone would love that. Imagine if that was yours. I think many people actually earn in order to pay the rents part of what they, uh, from part of what they earn or to be able to pay towards the purchase of the house or to be able to build a house. So you either build it or you buy it, or if you're renting it, you're working hard to pay towards the rent. MashaAllah, I know. May Allah bless us with beautiful homes. One of the gifts of Allah is that you have, a, a, you have a, what is called a spacious home, al-baytul wasa, you know, a, a home that you consider spacious and spacious in Islamic terminology would refer to the feeling within you that you would love to be indoors. You love it indoors. You don't want to rush outdoors unless you really have to go or once in a while, but you like it more indoors than outdoors. That's called a spacious home, even if it's not so big, subhanAllah. So my brothers and sisters, the point I want to raise today is very important. We work hard in order to pay the rent or in order to live a little bit comfortably. And we work very hard in order to be able to buy a house, ultimately our own or build one. But we forget that that is only going to help us for a few years. After that, we will go back to our maker and we will need a house there. That is the eternal abode, the eternal home. Just like there is an effort required to build something temporary, there is also an effort required to build that which is permanent. But guess what? The effort required to build that which is permanent is less than the effort required to build that which is temporary. If you were to fulfill your obligations that Allah has placed on your shoulders and you were to abstain from the prohibitions that Allah has said are prohibited, then you would automatically through that effort, and an effort is required to do those, through that effort you would automatically be earning the currency of the hereafter which is known as deeds. And the minute you have enough deeds, you have your house set. You have a beautiful bed, you'll have a recliner, you'll be having rivers flowing beneath that home and the gardens that are plush and amazing, beautiful. You will have fruit trees of whatever you wish, you'll have what you desire. But in order to get that, a little effort is required. Perhaps your five daily prayers within 24 hours may take you 24 minutes or a little bit more. But 24 minutes out of 24 hours to work in order to be uh, delivered the best and most beautiful house ever. It's very cheap, subhanAllah. It's actually a bargain. That's what it is. Similarly, to be able to dress in a certain way and just by merely dressing in a specific way, you're earning the currency that you're going to need for that eternal home. And what's that? Deeds. It's a good deed, beautiful deed. And I tell you, when it is very difficult for you to do the right thing and still you do it, you've earned double, triple, 10 times, 100 times, 700 times your salary. You've earned a lot because it was more difficult. If one thing, if doing one thing is so difficult, but you did that particular thing, a beautiful thing, an act of worship or staying away from a prohibition, it was so difficult, but for the sake of Allah, I quit this bad habit. Trust me, you've earned the currency to be able to pay 
for the house that's being built right now for you and I in the hereafter. You can purchase that house, you can build it. Subhanallah. The currency, that's what it is. Similarly, when you go out of your way to spend on the poor, when you go out of your way to build maybe a masjid or uh, to do something that the benefit of which is going to last beyond your death, Allah says, we're going to clock a lot of reward and the deeds are considered jariya. Jariya meaning continuous earning, continuously earning deeds. It's like an investment and your returns keep coming even after you've died. That's amazing. So remember, build your house, not just in, the, in this world. And I pray that Allah grant all of us beautiful homes. Who wouldn't want beautiful homes, a beautiful ride, a lovely holiday somewhere, mashallah. Costs money. And that money, we know we've got to work for it very, very hard. Well, to do the same and even more importantly, to be able to achieve that house of the hereafter also requires an effort. And like I said, you won't believe it. That effort is actually less than the effort that you've put in to the temporary pleasures. I'll go on holiday for two weeks. I've spent so many thousand dollars or pounds. Subhanallah. But Allah says, you know what? If you were to divide that or check how much, how long you worked for in order to be able to afford the holiday, you would find that if you worked with that type of dedication for the house of the hereafter, you would actually earn a much better place than you would when, you know, for the worldly life. So my brothers and sisters, remember to balance things. I'm not saying don't enjoy, don't build your house here, etc. But don't do it at the expense of your house in the hereafter. All it requires is develop your relationship with Allah Build a proper relationship with him every day. Remember, it's the day of Allah. Allah Almighty has granted you that day. Say your prayers five times a day. Dress in a beautiful way. What does it cost you? What does it cost you to dress in a specific way? If people were to taunt you because of a beautiful dress code that you've developed for the sake of Allah, so what? The fact that they've taunted you already makes you earn beautiful deeds by the patience you bore. Sabr, Allah says, Innama sabiruna ajrahum hisab. Allah rewards patience uh, and those who bear patience with a, an unlimited reward. Imagine your... Uh, deeds which is the currency of the hereafter would be unlimited as a result of patience because they mocked at you, they laughed at you, they swore you, they may have persecuted you to a certain extent simply because you dressed the right way, simply because you carried yourself in a beautiful way. It will happen. The messengers, Jesus may peace be upon him, Muhammad may peace be upon him, Moses may peace be upon him, they were mocked at and scoffed at and so on. It did not reduce their value in any way. It elevated their status, if anything, Subhanallah. So my brothers and sisters, here goes. Let's prepare for the hereafter as well. My building, my house, I want to purchase it. I want to build it, inshallah, through the good deeds. And I will be the best possible version of myself. I will not harm others. I will not hold grudges. I will not make others' lives difficult. I will not abuse or say vulgar words and so on. And I will fulfill my duty unto Allah in the best possible way. Like I said, worshipping him alone, following the example of the messenger, peace be upon him, to the best of my abilities. And inshallah, Allah will give you contentment and happiness in this world and the next. Aqulu qawli hadha. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.